Okay, today we're going to uh, take a little introduction into trig limits. And before we start working out any examples, I want to point out some special trig limits that are going to be helpful as you um, attempt to do these. All right, now traditionally, um, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, that's usually almost in every textbook. They introduce that to you, all right, as that limit being 1. All right, I like to also include the fact that we can take the limit as x approaches 0 and then just reverse that over, x over sine x equals 1 and that also is true. Okay, staying with sine, all right, this is a, also a common special trig limit. Um, whatever you have, your sine of kx over sine of kx. A lot of times I see people put like a smiley face there and a smiley face there to indicate, okay, you're taking the sine of something, that exact same something is on the bottom. That limit also is going to be 1. All right, and then this one just comes in handy, especially if you're doing a multiple choice test. All right, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine kx over x. All right, you can algebraically work this out. In the very first example I will do, we'll show you um, the correct steps for getting just the answer of k, whatever that coefficient is right there. All right, um, those, those properties apply to sine. All right, those exact same properties also apply to tangent. So that, you almost never do I see this in a calc book. However, these are limits that are easily memorized, and since there, there's so much of the consistency there between sine and tangent, then there's no reason not to introduce those to you. Um, uh, the next most common one that you will see in a calculus book is the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x. All right, if you reverse that numerator, you still end up getting 0, so that is good. Um, and then one little change on your denominator, the limit as x approaches 0, 1 minus cosine x over x squared is going to be a half. And then when you reverse the numerator, it's negative 1 half. All right, if you're good at memorizing, you know, memorizing some of these special trig limits are just going to help whenever you go to work these things out. All right, now I'm going to work through about four examples. All right, my first one um, is going to address that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine kx over x. All right, now according to the special trig limit I just showed you, we know the answer is going to be 4. All right, on a multiple choice test, that would be great. You could just instantly do that. All right, however, if you're trying to show your steps, you've got an open-ended test and you've got to algebraically or manipulate this so that you get the right answer. All right, I need to recognize this as being a trig limit, one of my special ones. All right, right here I have a 4x. I need this denominator to match that, all right, so that I can then say, okay, that's going to be equal to 1. So what I need is I need a 4 in the bottom. I can um, multiply by a form of 1, and I'm going to choose 4 over 4, because that will then give me a 4x in the bottom. So this 4 and this x I'm going to multiply together. This 4 is kind of left over, and I'm going to bring him out in front of my limit. Okay, so then I'm going to have 4 times the limit as x approaches 0 of sine 4x over, putting that 4 and that x together, I've got a 4x now in my bottom. Now I can use one of those special trig limits. I know that this is going to go to 1. So 4 times 1 is going to give me an overall answer of 4. Okay, um, another very similar one for another example here. We've got the limit as x approaches 0 of tangent 6x over 5x. All right, now one thing at a time. All right, I would take a look at some coefficients here. All right, that 5 is coefficient x on the bottom. There's an imaginary 1 coefficient sitting right there. All right, since they're coefficients and they're sitting out in front, I can pull that out in front and get rid of it and then look to see what I've got. So I'm going to pull out the one-fifth. I'm going to go to the limit as x approaches 0 of tangent of 6x over x. Okay, now here again, that is going to be one of those special trig limits. I know if I have them memorized, this is going to be 6. However, you've got to be able to show your work. Okay, I need the tangent of something and then that same something on the bottom. All right, I have a 6x up here. I just have an x. I'm missing the 6. So if I multiply by a form of 1, I'm going to choose 6 over 6. I'm not alter, al you know, not doing anything wrong to that equation. I'm just multiplying it by 1. Okay, this 6 will stay with the x, so I'll have a 6x on the bottom. Again, this guy is left over, so he's going to also come out, and I'm going to have to multiply him by that one-fifth, all right, which is what's going to give me here. It's going to give me a six-fifths out in front, 
then I'm going to have the limit as x approaches 0, tangent of 6x. I'm going to put this 6 with that x right there in my bottom. So now I've got a special trig limit. I know this is going to go to 1. That's going to go to 1. So then I'm going to have that 6 fifth times 1 gives me a 6 fifths. All right, so those were two pretty straightforward examples showing those special trig limits. Okay, now let's take a look at some others with maybe some different skills or concepts that you might have to address. All right, for my example here on the left, I've got the limit as x approaches 0 of secant x minus 1 over x. Okay, you're going to look at this. I'm still approaching 0, so maybe I can use one of the special trig limits. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm just going to have to, you know, see, play, we'll see what I can play with here. All right, my first thought is I'm not seeing any sines. I'm not seeing any tangents. I'm not really seeing any uh, cosines yet. So then I'm going to have to try something else. The secant, I'm going to try to replace with the reciprocal identity, 1 over cosine. So I'm going to have the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over cosine x minus 1 all over x. All right, now I've ended up causing a complex fraction here. So I'm going to multiply through by the least common denominator to get rid of this complex fraction. So I'm going to multiply my top by cosine x. I'm going to multiply the bottom by cosine x. All right, all I am doing is multiplying through by the least common denominator to get rid of that complex fraction. Okay, in doing that, I'm going to have to distribute there on the top. I'm going to have the limit as x approaches 0. 1 over cosine x times cosine x is going to be a 1 minus cosine x times 1, cosine x, and then x cosine x on the bottom. Okay, now I'm beginning to see, all right, I've got some pieces and parts of those special trig limits. All right, 1 minus cosine x over x, so that portion of it is going to be one of the special trig limits. All right, I can break this up. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do next so that I can get one of my special trig limits that I'm needing. So the limit as x approaches 0, 1 minus cosine x over x, all right, times. Now, I still have a cosine in the bottom. All right, you can, if you need to see it, put a 1 in the top, 1 over cosine x. All right, all I did there was I just took this quantity, I broke it up into two fractions that I multiplied together. You can always check to make sure you're doing this right. Remultiply these two fractions and see if you come back up with that answer. Now, technically, I am taking the limit of this entire quantity. All right, putting those brackets in is going to avoid me from having to write the limit twice in front of each of those. Okay, now, I know because of my trig identities, all right, I know what this is. All right, that's going to be equal to zero. All right, and over here, I'm just going to do a direct substitution. Okay, so <clears throat> on my next line, I'm going to say that this goes to zero because I know that because of my special trig properties. All right, then I'm going to go one over cosine of zero. Cosine of zero is one. One over one is going to be one, which I really don't even need to work that out since I'm multiplying by zero, but you can. Uh, zero times one is going to give me an overall limit of zero. All right, now for our last example, <clears throat> let's take a look at the limit as x approaches pi over 2, cosine squared x over 1 minus sine x. All right, now this right here, I'm now, x is not approaching 0, so none of those special trig limits are going to work, and that's okay because it, it, they don't always. Okay, now um, I could do, you know, direct substitution and see where that gets me. All right, chances are I'm going to have to do some. Um, substitutions of some trig identities. I'm seeing a cosine squared x right there in the numerator. All right, so the first thing that comes to mind is um, the trig identity of sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. All right, now, that's not this. It's in there. All right, if I solve for cosine squared x, Take that equation and solve it. Basically, I'm just going to subtract sine squared x from both sides. So cosine squared x then is going to be equal to 1 minus sine squared x. Okay, so you really do have to remember some of your old trig identities. Now that I've got that, I can do a substitution. All right, cosine squared x is going to be equal to 1 minus sine squared x. So I can make that substitution on top and see what that does for me. So I'm going to have the limit 
as x approaches pi over 2. I'm going to do the substitution in the numerator. 1 minus sine squared x all over 1 minus sine x. Okay. Now I'm going to look again at that numerator. Hopefully you recognize that this is going to be the difference of two squares. I'm going to be able to factor that. That's perfect square. That's perfect square, and i got a minus in there. Okay, so now I am going to factor that numerator. All right, I'm still taking the limit here, the limit as x approaches pi over 2. I'm going to factor that into 1 minus sine x times 1 plus sine x, and then all over 1 minus sine x. All right, and then ultimately this does help. Okay, I've got a quantity now that I can cross out. I've got a 1 minus sine x. i got a 1 minus sine x. So those two are going to cross out. Now I'm going to be down to the limit as x approaches pi over 2 of 1 plus sine x. All right, and if you wanted to really make it look good here, it is of this entire quantity. All right, now I can just simply do a direct substitution on this part. All right, the limit of constant there is going to be 1. So that's going to be 1. Plus, I'm going to do my direct substitution here. Sine pi over 2. All right, if you remember sine pi over 2, that's going to be 1. 1 plus 1. That's going to give me a final limit of 2. So that's just um, a few of your special trig limits that's going to help you get through trying to calculate some of these trig limits.